Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little knife here. This is the Quiet Carry Knives West. Um, first off, though, I want to thank my buddy Josh over at the Journey Win Junk blog for uh, sending this little guy along. It's an interesting piece. It's one I wouldn't have got the handle otherwise. So thank you for that, Josh. Um, another note: What's this company, Quiet Carry? Well, they're a, uh, a small knife maker and other gear provider. Um, you can see here, here's their little logo. Not Chirigorov. It's uh, the the Quiet Carry. Looks like maybe some kind of a techno bear. I don't freaking know. But either way, they're a company that's done the Bandit as well as the Strand. They do some interesting work. And so, uh, yeah, that's what this guy is. And then, um, finally, let's do some size comparisons real quick. Uh, here it is against the Spydeco Delica. Here it is against the Ontario Rat Number 1. And the Rat Number 2 is around here someplace, I swear to you. Here it is. Um, here it is next to your Spydeco uh, Chaparral and FRN, which is a another very small sort of compacty knife. And then here it is against the Spydeco Dragonfly, which is a very, very small little piece. Yet at the same time, in terms of handle length, this guy is beating them out both in terms of, well, actually blade and handle length. This is a tiny freaking knife. And then finally, a quick measurement real quick. So you get a sense of the uh, the overall size of this guy. We are coming in here around... Oh, let's see here, 2.47 inches overall, which means that no matter how much the cop dislikes you, this guy's coming in under two and a half inches, uh, which is going to be fine for Chicago, Cleveland, a bunch of other places in the world. So that's that's really nice. Um, And so anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little pocket knife here. So first off, um, on the good side, this has a nice design. I like the design very much because not only does it have sort of a, um, a street scalpel sort of look um, to it, but it's a, it looks attractive. It's got a techno sort of thing. It's it's sort of a you know a shadow run slip joint thing. I, I like that very much. And the four dot motive that they use repeatedly works great. And coupled with this dark blast, this is an attractive little piece. And honestly, I like the design a lot more than I expected to. So that's good. Next thing, this is a very nice blade. Um, D2 is a very solid blade steel, and this has some degree of flat down here, some belly, a very, very fine tip on there, and it's actually ground well. Um, it's ground relatively thinly, such that even though the blade stock on this guy is surprisingly thick, I mean, seriously, guys, yeah, but... um. It can still actually cut a lot of things, which is a, a very nice detail there. Uh, so that's good. Next thing, this has a very nice clip on it. Pop this guy closed. You can see here it's got plenty of uh, room underneath there. It's got some ramp for it. This is a clip that worked great. Every time I carry this knife, it was just sort of effortless. And that's the very best thing that a nice little knife can be here. Next thing, this is a non-locking knife. This is a slip joint entirely. If I just press, it will close. There is no concern there. Um, and that's not a great thing for some people because a locking knife is a safety mechanism. But it is a legal thing for a lot of people in the world. A two and a half inch slip joint is going to be legal for a lot more people than a knife that locks. That's just a simple fact of life. But the thing is, I feel this is still a pretty safe slip joint. It's also, by the way, not a knife that you can open one-handed. Um, not at all. I mean, there is no way I can see that happening unless you've got, like, saber-tooth nails or something. That ain't gonna happen. So, um, but the thing is, I still feel like this is a pretty safe knife. Not only because the string, uh, spring, that is, on this guy is actually pretty strong. It also has a half-stop, which is a nice safety measure there. I mean, and, and it closes nicely. This is actually pretty well done. And even if you do start to have it close a little bit, you've got this unsharpened portion right here, which I think will catch the majority of the blade on your finger there rather than anything else. And so I, I like this. I think it's a reasonably safe knife. And even though it's a slip joint, it's not one that I felt like, oh God, this is terrifying as I have for some other ones. Then finally on the good side, this opens without using the nail nick. It has a nail nick, but it also has this little notch here, which basically functions like an easy open notch on a traditional knife. But you can just reach in there with both your fingers and pinch this little guy open. And that's great. Um, I hate nail nicks. Seriously, I am the only nick I can take, and even then, just barely. Um, but uh, this allows you to just pinch the knife open, so even if you keep short fingernails, um, you're able to... And that's that's just great. Um, and I really, truly believe that as we go forward in the future, easy open notch need to become more common rather than less common because they just, they open the knife up to a bunch more people. And so to me, all of that is the good here is that it opens without a nail nick. It's very safe for a non-locking knife. It is non-locking and one hand open only, so, or uh, two hand only. So it's going to be legal in a lot more places. Um, it has a very nice clip, a nice blade that's ground pretty aggressively. 
interesting and a very nice design. On the great side for me is the size. This guy is super freaking compact. I mean, seriously. In Once you close this guy down, it is tiny. This guy is absolutely minuscule. I mean, we can compare it even to the Spyderco Dragonfly, and it basically fits within the, the same, you know, overall footprint in the pocket here. This is tiny, and that's great. This is a really nice little small knife, um, and I, I find it per pretty pocketable, pretty easy to carry. It's pretty sealed. There's not really much going on on either side here. This is a knife that I forgot I was carrying, but every time I needed it, it was there, and that to me well, that's absolutely excellent. That's great. And so uh, that, to me, is the great there. On the bad side, first off, they miss the sharpening choil very slightly. The uh, You can see there's a little bit of a heel at the bottom of the blade there, a little smile. That's okay. It's not the end of any worlds, but it's also not something I love. Next thing, it is a non-locking knife, and that does have serious safety consequences in some cases. Of course, it is perfectly safe if you're pressing in this direction against the blade, say as you're cutting, but if something comes back from behind, it can come shut on you. I think it's probably going to be okay. Um, you know, in most situations, that's just not a necessity. I mean, humanity got along with non-locking knives for a long time, but you do want to keep that in mind. That is a big difference, and in some ways, a backlock would be a little bit nicer here, at least for my personal use. But again, it has legal things. I'm not going to beat them up on it. Next thing, this does have a lot of sharp edges. The sides of the D2 are sharp. The inside of the this this is sharp as well. There's just there's a lot of sharpness here, not just on the blade of that, and that's not something I'm super in love with, but you know what? It's not the end of any particular world. Next thing, the... Um, finish on this guy shows a bunch of snail trails. You can see on here, anytime you do these kinds of dark blasted finishes, every time something rubs up against it, it's going to leave a little trail. It's okay. And, you know, after a while, it leads a little bit of a wabi-sabi look to it. But you know, it's not something I'm super in love with. Um, next thing, this is not ambidextrous. That's kind of a frustration. Look, I can see why they did it that way, just for, um, well, attractiveness, frankly, because they'd have to have the same cutout on the other side, use a filler plate or something like that. But honestly, um, this is a knife that is a, a, a completely ambidextrous slip joint, and they made it right side only. Given for a lefty, given that it's a slip joint, it can't accidentally cut open. This will carry very nicely in the left pocket, too. Um, but I, I don't completely understand that. Next thing, it's got this sharp corner in the back here. This is the one kind of carry foul on it um, because it's got this sharp corner sticking up here that is uh, constantly going to be attacking whatever's in your pocket. Although, again, if you're carrying this on the right side, um, th that's not going to be an issue. This is going to be up against the, the, the side. Of the, and so I'm probably overblowing that, but I'm looking for things to nitpick here. Then finally, on the on the bad side, this is a little pricey. It's 110 bucks for a D2 slip joint. You know, at some level, it's titanium. I can't get too bad out of shape on it. And, you know, I, I still do very much like the knife, but 110 bucks is a lot of money here, absolutely 100%. And so that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. And all of that together comes to the bad, is that it is pricey. The finish shows snail trails. It's an ambidextrous knife that's not given an ambidextrous clip. Although, again, not a huge deal there. Um, you get lots of sharp edges. It is non-locking. They did absolutely miss the sharpening choil. On the ugly front, the stock on this guy just strikes me as way too thick. I mean, it cuts okay, but it's 0.115 inches is here. That seems a little ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the Rat 2 here is much, much thinner in the blade stock. The Delica is much, much thinner in the blade stock. And as a result, although it does have a hollow grind that allows it to cut at all, when you're actually cutting into paper or something like that, here, let me grab a sheet of paper. You can see here that it kind of, everything kind of gets split off this. You can do it. It's okay. But God, I wish that this were a little slicier. One of the best parts of modern tra uh, of traditional knives, that is, was that really thin stock. Allowed them to cut like freaking crazy, and they didn't do it here. And so, although it's a good knife as it is, and it still will cut, I think this would be amazing with a stock that was reasonably thick. Um, both because it would be a little bit more compact still, and because it would just slice all that much better. So if you're slicing into, you know, very uh, firm surfaces like potatoes or closed cell foam... You know, a lot of people cut potatoes on the closed cell foam. Um, that's something to keep in mind. So, um, and that to me is what's ugly, is that they made an, a modern slip joint here, but they've forgotten the best lesson that traditional slip joints have for us, which is that less blade stock is generally a better thing for cutting. Final conclusions, you know, honestly, this is a really nice knife design. Um, it's beautiful, it's minimalist, it's carryable, it's openable, it's safe, and with a very, very nice little blade shape. And honestly, the construction's pretty good, too. It's titanium, it's D2 steel. Uh, and 
and frankly, I, I, I enjoyed carrying this knife a lot more than I expected to. When I first, you know, when I, when I had the strand, I was thinking, oh, it's a slip joint, it's a nail nick. I, why, why would I do that? Why, why? Just why? But the thing is, I actually find this really compelling. I find it to be a nice piece. Not only because I like the design, I like the minimalism, I like the size and such, but I, I just, I kind of like it. And I think this is a really nice option for people who are in an area where one hand opening is uh, unable or, or slip joints or something like that. And you can send it to Canada. Hey, that's great. But look, so I like this knife a, a whole bunch. It's something that I did enjoy carrying that I do really enjoy. Um, I do wish, though, desperately that the blade stock was a little bit thinner, because then the slicing would be dialed up just a little bit, which would make this an, a really incredible knife. It would easily make this guy a gem, and it would make it smaller. It, just be, it would be better if they'd used reasonable stock. But even as it is, I think it's a really nice slip joint option. And I think if you're in an area where slip joints are kind of a, a good thing for you, where they're a requirement, and you want something that's small, easy to carry, but is going to put in good work and feel remarkably safe, if you're willing to spend that extra money, and there is some extra money there, I, this is going to be a very nice piece. And although I hope future iterations are going to be pretty, are uh, going to be even better, you know, I, I, I like this, and I'm pretty wild for the West. Huh? 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 Okay, anyways, hope this has been interesting to you, and that you had yourselves an absolutely wonderful uh, rest of your day, and that, uh, that, that this slips right into your heart. Not in like the, oh God, no, no, it is the, the, the joy of this slips into your heart, not the knife. That'd be bad. Don't do that. Okay, have a good one, everybody. Bye now.